Good morning. Please take your seats. What a wonderful morning it is again. What a wonderful opportunity it is for me again to stand before you this morning. Good morning, Maggie. Thank you, Maggie, for trusting me once again this morning. You and Babi continue to um, equip us, and we are learning along the way. Please, can we put our hands together for the choir this morning? Thank you. I'd like to just acknowledge our Father in the Lord, who is not with us this morning, but I truly believe he is here with us in spirit. And I stand here with the confidence that he is here with me. So you can just imagine him right here next to me. I trust that um, you will receive today's word um, as God wants you to receive it. And I believe that you're here because it is for you. I ask you that you prepare your hearts and your minds and understand that I just stand here as a vessel of God. It is not me, but it is God who is speaking through me. I just want today perhaps to, to, to explain my today's topic, which is the grace of God. I think we are all here, it is because of God's grace. And I believe that we all know what grace is. But I just want us to speak on it today, to reflect on grace, and to look back and appreciate how far God has taken us as individuals, as a church, as families, as, in, as people in these communities that we are placed by God to influence. Because God calls us to be an example, to be the light in the world. But it is his grace that gives us the power. And as you have spoken, Fundisi, about the power that the Lord gives us, that helps us to do well. So I want us to turn to Ephesians 4, verse 7, in the New King James Version studio, where the word reads as follows. But to each one of us, Grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. I think the, the, the most beautiful part of this verse for me is the gift, is that grace is a gift. And it's God's gift to mankind. It's God's favor to us. We are not worthy, Bazalwani, but God chooses, even though we are undeserving, to bless us with his grace. He is willing to forgive us and bless us even though we don't deserve to be treated well or even though we don't deserve his generosity. But because he is a loving father, there is no father, I mean, we can make an example with the apostle. There is no father who will turn you back, who will not encourage you, who will not bless you. And that is God, Bazalwan. God is here for us he has given us the gift of his grace to walk through life with him right by our side. But the most important thing that we need to appreciate is that this grace that we so seek comes through the conduit of faith, which we spoke about on Wednesday. And this faith is in Jesus Christ alone. So it is only through Jesus that we can receive this grace by believing in Jesus Christ. And I know that we all here have received Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And I know that life is hard sometimes and we trip and fall along the way. But I want you to know that this grace that God has given us is for free, Bazalwani. It doesn't matter what happens along the way. It doesn't matter what steps you have fallen away from and how you have misaligned yourself with the Lord. But because he has that grace, with all of us, through all our storms, through all our troubles, God remains faithful. So I just want to define what a gift is so that we can appreciate what we mean when we say grace is but a gift from God. A gift has no debt. It is not a loan. So there's no repayment. You're not expected to pay back anything. It is just a gift like you receive a gift on your birthday. No one expects you to give it back. No one expects that once you, they have given you a gift, you in turn need to give them a gift. So that's the way that God has given us grace. And in his word, in John 1 verse 12, as we've already uh, alluded to, but as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name. So all you have to do is receive that gift. 
which is the salvation through Jesus Christ, to receive that grace from the Lord. As I have said, Bazalona, it is free. It is free to us as the recipients, those who receive it. But please don't forget that God gave his only son. So for him, it was at a price. That's the most important element that we need to remember, Bazalwani. God gave us this Jesus Christ, his only begotten son, as a gift to mankind, so that we may be redeemed of our sins. So as much as you have received a gift, I will buy you a gift. It's your birthday. I have spent money on it, and I give it to you for free, right? God gave us Jesus Christ, his only son, so he had to part with his son and give, who was like his everything. Bomagege will understand your only child. If you have only just one child and you have to give your child away, that is what the Lord did. That is the amount of sacrifice that the Lord gave us. There is also a transfer in ownership in gifting. So if I give you a gift, it's no longer mine. So Jesus Christ belongs to us. As much as he is God's son, he is also ours. So God agreed or allowed us to share his son with him. And that kind of transfer is also permanent. So God doesn't then on another day, because maybe you have fallen short, take Jesus back or take the Holy Spirit away from you. But he has given you that gift. That is why it is important to sit with the Holy Spirit, to sit in silence and listen because the Holy Spirit is forever with us. God is always with us through the Holy Spirit and that is the grace that he has given us. So even though sometimes I know we forget, sometimes we go through so much turmoil and sometimes we want to try on our own because we want to exercise faith, right? And we want to be grown up Christians and we want to not drink milk anymore and we want to eat bread now. But the Holy Spirit is consistently there with you. The only difference is that the Holy Spirit doesn't force himself onto you. So the Holy Spirit will speak to you in the softest of voices. But stays with you consistently, whether you ignore him or you don't. He is there. So whether it's hard or it's easy or it's fun or it's difficult, he's there through the storms, through the valleys, through it all. The Lord Jesus said and promised us when he left this earth that he's leaving us not alone, but with the Holy Ghost. So as we walk through life, let us remember that that's another gift that was left for us, that Jesus left with us is the Holy Spirit. We don't have to struggle, Bazalwan. The simplest prayer is Holy Spirit, take over the easiest prayer I'm telling you and then you just relax and also tell him that you're just relaxing and saying I'm handing this over to you I don't even want to think about it you know there is a time in my life where I remember very well that there was a time where there was a situation at home with my mother's being sick where I realized that I don't have the power I have done everything I thought I could do in my power and in my knowledge. And then I said, Holy Spirit of the living God, please take over. And I know and I believe and I trust. And that's where that faith that we spoke about comes in, is to trust that once you've handed it over, he will take over. And then he'll show off because that's what he does really well. Another thing that I want to remind us, Bazalwane, is in accordance with 2 Corinthians 8 verse 9 where it reads as follows you know the grace of our lord jesus christ that though he was rich yet for your sake he became poor so that you through his poverty may become rich so it's a generous god we're speaking about this is just one of the other gifts the giver becomes poorer so that you may become richer when a person takes out money from their bag and hands it over to you, they are poorer, you become richer. And this is done voluntarily, remember. Also not that they are doing it so that they can profit, which is our God. He doesn't give us the Lord Jesus. He doesn't give us the Holy Spirit because he wants to profit in terms of a similar exchange. God just wants to bless us. 
because he is our father, because he is God. He, he, he wants to forfeit something that he owns so that you can profit from it. Grace is also unmerited favor. Number five. Now I know people in this house know what that means. It means God takes you from the end of the line and puts you to the front of the line and you can't even explain it. It means God shines a light upon your life so that even those who doubted you will know, no, no, there is a God in the story. That is what grace is. Grace says you will be chosen among hundreds. Grace says you will be put forward. Grace says you will lead. Grace says you are being pushed and propelled. That you are called to be an example of God's love. So as a Christian, we are, as Christians, we are called to, to shine the light of God. To look like we are children of God. To remember that we are the head and not the tail. But not just know it, but live it. Walk it. Let the people see that there is a God through you. Let the people know that there is a God. Let the people see that no, God's grace is upon that life. Because God's grace comes with so much favor, such beauty, such peace, such ease. Everything just becomes easy because you're a child of God. You know, you don't have to struggle and strive and push because you're tapping into the grace of the Holy Spirit each and every day. So the Holy Spirit is guiding your steps on a daily basis, day to day. You don't need to even try and figure out this life thing, I promise you. All you need is God. All you need is the Holy Spirit. And I'm telling you, like I said on Wednesday, if you give yourself time to meditate on his word, Know what he has promised you. And then just step out in faith and walk in his word. That is all we need, Bazalon. To just know who God is for us. To trust that we are his children. So that when they look at us, other people will say, Hi, Nembal. She or he is of God. Let us want to be those people. I know sometimes we are shy, Bazalon. But I want us to, to step into faith and walk boldly in this grace that God has given us. And I want us to believe and trust because God demonstrated his own love that while we were still sinners, he gave Jesus Christ who died for us. So what is God's purpose of grace? Because without grace, or God's grace in specific, a person cannot be saved. Remember, Jesus died on the cross so that we may be saved. And also, it is God working in us, with us, through us, consistently, continuously. Because without him, Bazalwane, we are nothing. We can achieve nothing. Just try one day and say, Lord, I want to take over. I want to take the wheel. These 24 hours, they are mine. Please hand them over to me and watch. I don't even know if you'll survive the day. Because you could even die. Not to scare you, Bazalone, but that's how much God protect, protects us on a day to day. You step out of your bed and you get ready and you go to, you get into a car and you start your car and it starts and it moves and no one bumps you and you don't lose the steering wheel and you think it's all you, right? It's not. The devil is out to kill, steal, and destroy. So he wakes up with you while well, I believe he doesn't even sleep. But uh, the pastors will qualify my statement. But I truly believe he doesn't sleep. He is waiting for you to get up and the minute you get up, as a child of God, please make sure that the devil is shaken. Kanganich. That she, oh, she was awake one more time. But not walk in fear of that. Trusting that he is afraid because he knows whose you are. But it starts by you knowing whose you are. By knowing you're a child of God and walking in that faith, Bazalwan. It's very important. 
we don't walk here and and with your head held down and your eyes looking at your feet be bold we are called to be strong to shine to be the salt to be the light and i and i want us to say i wanted to remind us that we have been saved by grace not because of our own doing in accordance with Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 to 9 where it says for it is by grace that you have been saved through faith again faith remember so you need to have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ who died for your sins and it says and it is not by your own doing so there's nothing there's no good works that you can do to receive this grace i said it is free remember and it is so that no one may boast so you don't go around and say i've done well i did this i gave to the poor i served in the church that is why jesus then saved me no it is a free gift for all mankind you know i always think about how sometimes in life we get treated or mistreated by other people and we think ah oh, this person cannot be god's child we all are god's children he loves us the same there is nothing you can do no matter how bad you are that can discount god's love for you whether or not you're a child of god he loves us all the same and that is why as christians we are called to love everyone the same because we are what we are of god if we truly are of god and we are like god and in god's likeness that means we should love everyone equally and that's a calling for a christian and it's hard bazalone i know you look at somebody and like you don't deserve my love you look at somebody and you feel like this person doesn't qualify even for jesus to look at but god does do you see how god blesses us all even the people you think mm -mm, god will bless them you think you are coming to church you are tithing you are giving you are taking care of the poor you are here in church serving you and then someone walking there outside in that street who doesn't even come to church god blesses them in abundance why because they are children of god by virtue of being born of god because it is not about what you do i said it's not about works someone may believe that jesus christ died for their sins and that's it they trust that they believe in that and that's what the word says and it it says her faith so you are here busy and someone else is just trusting the lord sometimes they even come to church i know one lady who comes to this church she comes month end she gives a tithe every month i see her when she packages it she's not a member of this church she comes month end so that person knows the principles of god ne they are applying them they're not coming to church i'm not saying let's not come to church bazalwane i'm just showing you how god works we preach the word in this church through babe on digital platforms people hear him speak god speaks through him God touches their hearts. So they've learned a principle you must give, you must tithe. So this woman, I'll never show you, but nje I know her. Every month and she comes to church in the second service and she gives her tithe faithfully. She doesn't come to church every Sunday, but on the month and Sunday, Futsi has envelopes always rather fat. She comes to give to the Lord and the Lord will bless her because she has abided by his principle. That is how God works by the Lord. And also I just want to refer to John 15 verse 5. Where Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. Again, Jesus reminding us here that we need him. We need the Holy Spirit. Remember he left the Holy Spirit on the earth to assist us. So if we want to achieve in life to be prosperous like you said Mfundis, 
we need to abide in Christ. Ngese so atilete umani hlala kimi nami ngihlala kini. So you are together, you are the vine as a tree for the young people. A branch is attached to the tree. That is how we need to be attached to Jesus Christ. Like the tree. If you cut off a branch of a tree, it withers and it dies. That's exactly what happens to your life. I mentioned on Wednesday that the devil wants to do that. He cuts you off that supply. And once you are sitting there by the corner or by yourself, then he comes to destroy you because it's easy. Because now you are removed from the body of Christ, like the tree. Like he says, he's the vine and we are the branches. So you want to remain in that branch, in, as a branch, remain on that vine. As the recipients of God's grace, we are also called as Christians to be gracious to others. Like I've mentioned, we are called to serve others. We are supposed to exercise the different gifts that God has given us. And in accordance with Romans 12, verse 6 to 8, it reads as follows, Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Or ministry, let us use it in our ministering. He who teaches in teaching, he who exhorts in exhortation, he who gives with lib liberally. He who leads with diligence and he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. So this is us serving Bazalwani, serving the children of God, serving other people. And I said this on Wednesday, you need to not restrict your serving and say, I, want, I just want to serve Maggie or I just want to serve Babi. You have brothers and sisters in the house. You serve the people. Someone else wants to ask, how do I serve? The fact that you know Kutsis is clearly when it's to walk to church, as an example, and you live nearby to her and you offer her a lift to church, that's serving. The fact that you come to church and you're an usher and you usher people into the church, that's serving. The fact that you work at work, you are serving. And you need to do it with the same diligence and excellence as you would in the house of God. Please remember that, Bazalwan. Don't be choosy. Don't be saying, because when I serve Maggie, I'm going to do my best. And then when you serve me, it's not the same. And then when you serve Bab, it's different again. And then when they see you at work, you're a different server at work. You are not doing your work. You're not submitting work on time. You are not being excellent. You don't exemplify an excellent spirit. That's inconsistency, Bazalwan. And we know we serve a consistent God. We are called to be like God. God does not change. He is not a man. Remember, Bazalwane, God is consistent. So if you truly want to exemplify being a Christian or God, it means you need to try and be Christ-like, right? Which is to be like Jesus or to be like God. God doesn't count and say, yeah, yesterday you said, so today I'm not going to serve you or I'm not going to bless you. Or today, I'm, you know, as a Christian, it, we are called to live this Christian life in all facets of our lives. So as a mother, you can't be inconsistent. As a father, you can't be inconsistent. As an employee, you cannot be. As an employer, you can't be inconsistent. So you can't, we can't go to work every day and then some months we don't get paid. That would mean our employer is being inconsistent, Right? And God says we need to be consistent as we live our lives through faith. Also, what grace does, <laughs> it changes your life. For the better. There's no way, Bazalwani, where you will come into contact with God's grace and remain the same. Believe me. There has to be a shift. That is how you know that you've come into contact with the grace. And I've mentioned before that there is a grace in this house, which I believe we are all witness to, of how our lives have been transformed just by listening to the word and, and taking the word and running with it. 
which is the other most important thing that we need to remember, Bazalwan. It's not just coming here, dressing up, looking good, and sitting on these chairs that God, God has saved us for. Babe always says we've been called to serve. Do well in everything that you do, in all areas of your life. God expects it of us. That is how we show him that we are grateful, that we are thankful, that we are committed to the call, that he can trust us. God wants to trust us, Bazalwan. God wants to use us. And I believe in our previous teachings, we have learned that God wants us to prepare ourselves. So to be that vessel that God can use, you need to prepare yourself. And to know what that looks like, you need to work with God through the word. So you need to read the word to know what it means and, and what it means to be a vessel of God and how he uses you and when he uses you and how you need to prepare to be used. But again, God gives us the grace to do it all the way that he needs us to do it. I remember when I was walking, um, when I was still in my crutches stage. Oh, thank God for healing, Bazalon. You, you, I can't walk and I need these crutches, so I need to learn how to walk with them. And, and that for me is just how Holy Spirit works. Sometimes you fall. Sometimes you break your leg. Sometimes you lose your step. Sometimes you get hurt. Holy Spirit is like your crutch. Holy Spirit will hold you up. Holy Spirit will make you stand. The grace of God will make you look like nothing's wrong. The grace of God will give you the power to show up. The grace of God will give you the strength to provide for your family. The grace of God will wake you up every morning, will give you health, and for the students will make you pass. The grace of God will give you the spirit of excellence at work. It is just God's grace, Bazalan, that is for free. Eh? Once you've received Jesus Christ, for free, you have God's grace hovering over your life. And like I was explaining on Wednesday, they will see, they will know because it is powerful. This grace that you walk with inside of you may not, you know, you know, sometimes people want to look at the grace and see it and feel something and vibrate. No, Bazalwan. The grace is evident in our lives, in how our lives happen. You know how things just, just happen zero effort if at all and and you know it's amazing how god works through his grace all we need to do is yield to the grace yield to holy spirit yield to his word walk in faith and then watch god Bazalwane. you know i think i always say to myself i wonder what i was doing before i understood who god is I wonder what my life, how I survived, you know? You know, when you, are, when you become a Christian and when you choose Jesus, you become very aware of, of how life is spiritual. There's so many things and secrets that you become aware of. And you think, yeah, mama, imagine all those years where I was living in sin and I had no idea. That's how you know God was there. You would have died, Pela. But because, because God was there, you didn't even know God was there, but he was there and protected you. Now you are wiser. Now you know, which is why then the next step becomes sharing with other brethren, other people. Make them appreciate and understand how God can change your life completely. People who knew you five years ago will not recognize you anymore. People who know you today, next year you'll look different. You will be walking differently. God would have blessed you so many times. Your whole face would have changed. There's people I'm looking at here. Hey, they look amazing. They've got hair. Their brows are on fleek. 
a year ago, I promise you, they didn't look like this. And I know it's because God has blessed them. They can afford to buy hair now. That's God's grace. That's a blessing. They may have been blessed with a job, and now they are able. They can do so many things. Because God makes us, wants us to look beautiful for him, for his glory. So that even when a person comes up to you and they ask, so how are you doing it? You just say, hey, God's grace. It's amazing. You should try it sometime. You know? And I think the best thing about Christianity for me and about God's grace is, is how it is free. You don't have to pay anything. You don't have to pay anyone. You don't even have to go anywhere. You know, Baba always tells about his, mo his day of salvation and how he received Jesus. He was all by himself. He didn't need a pastor or a choir or, but God spoke to him in his heart and he received Jesus and that was it for free. He didn't pay anyone. He didn't have to get into the car and go to someone and ask them to give them, give him Jesus. Just like me and you, you made a decision one day and you said, I choose Jesus. And for those that haven't chosen Jesus, I encourage you, choose the Lord. Choose him as your Lord and Savior. Just remember God gave his son for you. It doesn't matter how bad you have sinned. It doesn't matter how terrible a person you think you are. In God's eyes, you are but his child. And all he wants is to be your father. God is waiting for us, Bazalwan. God is waiting for us to ask him to guide us. He's ready. He's ready because he, remember, he has blessings sitting just for you, packaged beautifully. And you know what's the nicest part about that? You can't take my gifts. I can't take yours. So it's about when do I reach the point in my life where I understand that and I appreciate it so that I can then tap into those gifts so that I can live that life that God has planned for me. God has planned a beautiful life for each and every one of us. And through his grace, we are going to live it. Here on the earth, remember, I know how we grew up being told heaven is gold and beautiful and that's where we will live our amazing lives. I want to put it to you this morning. You can live an amazing life here on earth, displaying God's glory, displaying his grace upon your life. Let's not wait to die, Bazalwane. Let's not say, I will be happy and my life will be fulfilled. fulfilled la. God said we were here to dominate. So we must walk in that faith, Bazalwani. That God calls us for dominion here. He didn't say He's blessing us when once we get to like, like we must wait to get to heaven. No. We must live blessed lives here and exhibit God's grace. I think that's what is the most important takeaway for me, for you all today. Please pursue a life that makes God attractive. That is how we grow the church. If you are worried about, ish, the church is small, it means we are not displaying our God. They are not seeing God in us. We must exhibit him in character, in the way we speak, in the way we do things, in the way you look. The young ones, comb that hair. Look clean and, and, and appealing. So that when you come to a person, you know Mabe preaches about this a lot. When you want to invite someone to church and you look scruffy, are they going to come to church? No, you must look expensive. You come to the person and they're like, yo, this person is loaded. Ukezile. Uh, you've done your hair nicely, you're looking good, and you say, you know, in our church, they look at you like, eh, I want to be part of the church. You know, we need to make God look good. We need to make God visible. We need to make his grace visible. That is why God has saved us, so that we can bring more people to the house of God. And that is what we are called to. And Fundis, I promise you next week, after today, Bazalona are bringing visitors to the church. We are going to invite people to church because we have learned that that is why we are here. We are here to grow the church of God. We are here to grow the church of God. 
We are here to make God look good. So if you look good and sound good and behave well and look like Christ, you are sure to be able to invite at least one person. That's my challenge to you, Bazala. Let's go out there and look like God wants us to look, behave like we should as Christians of God, walk in, his, in faith and display the grace upon our lives that God has given us. And next week, when the MC announces or wants to welcome visitors, we should have visitors. Maggie is here, Bazalwane. That's the other major reason Maggie is here. She doesn't miss church because she loves church, but also because she's ready to welcome new people to the house of God. Let's give Maggie something to do. To smile and look beautiful for other people and bring people to God. That is our job. Our job is easy, Bazalwane. You, you don't even have to preach to the person. Just bring them here. Baba will do the rest. I mean, we're all here because someone invited you, right? Now I'm going to invite One day, she didn't have to invite me again. Just once. It was once and it was done. And here I am. What, 14 years later? Give or take. Yeah. 14 years later, I'm here. She invited me once, Bazala, and I went to morning glory prayer service, and I was sold. Because the man of God was there, and he was preaching the word. So ours is to bring people to church. So you are not saved, and God's not giving you the grace just to look pretty, and to have money, and to enjoy life in the land of the living. No, Bazala, our biggest, biggest call is to bring people to Christ. Let us not want to enjoy this beauty of Jesus Christ. Let everyone experience God. You're having so much fun and you're having such a nice life all by yourself. That's not fair. And that doesn't exhibit service. We are God, God can come down to earth. So we are like a representation of God here on earth. To help him on the calling of bringing all to Christ. Jesus is not coming back until we are done with that assignment. I think when I was born, he was already coming back, Masinyan. But until we are done, Bazalwan, I mean, Jesus is here to fetch Liban Lalak, the church. So our job is to bring the church to church and build the church of God, then Jesus is going to come. I hope you're inspired, Bazalwane. I hope you know that you don't have to do it alone. And I hope you trust that Holy Spirit is there to lead you and guide you and give you the power that you need in everything, everything, and I mean everything. No matter how small, there's no small request for God. There's no small request for his grace. Holy Spirit is going to help you with even the things that you look at and you think, yo, how do I bring this to God? He already knows. He already knew, even before you were aware, that you would go through it. And he promised us that he would be with us. So as we walk out there boldly, representing Jesus, looking good, testifying about the Lord and inviting others, to this beautiful life of grace. I want you to go out there boldly knowing that the Holy Spirit is with you. And that is Jesus Christ himself. He's going to usher you in rooms. He's going to assist you. He's going to put words in your mouth. Me, I have a small testimony. Sometimes I go to meetings and I'm not sure what to say. And I always say, this is the school fees that my father paid for. But the words and putting it together and presenting, yo, sometimes I walk out and I'm like, ooh, that was Holy Ghost. I had no idea what I said, but for some reason it made sense. Because the Malanga Gafan. Other days we are shining and fighting and strong and ready and prepared. Other days you are weak and tired. And Holy Spirit steps in. That is the Holy Spirit that I'm speaking of today. That is the grace that I'm speaking of today. That God will give you the grace to do it all. 
to make it look easy that's what god does he makes it look like you can even though you know you are dying inside but your appearance will look like you can because the kiss grace is upon your life be confident trust in the lord have faith in jesus christ remember him in all that you do he promises us in his word that if you do that he will bless you He will straighten your path. He will be a light unto your feet. Let's do that, Bazalwane. Just trust in the Lord Jesus. That is all I had for you this morning. Thank you for your attention. And thank you for the love. Thank you.